Yes, hello everyone. Today we're going to talk about Microsoft 365 Defender, which is already in preview, but we'll take a look and I hope I will be able to open the connector and set it up. So before we go, let's have some introduction about myself. My name is Adnan Rafiq, I'm based out of here in New Jersey. My recent certification are CISM and CDPSC Privacy Security Engineer. And a little bit about myself, been Microsoft MVP for a couple of years, uh, certified exchange, Office 365 certified, and been doing a number of projects for uh, big fortune 50 companies. So that's being said, I mean, if you have not seen previous videos upon um, security and Azure Sentinel, uh, there's a playlist uh, with the name of Azure, and I may set up a new specific to Sentinel if I end up making more videos. But the Azure section, you will be able to find a number of lectures, and there will be more. So now let's get back to uh, Defender. So as you can see, the Defender is an endpoint. What it means that it's basically coming from the protection for the desktops. So in any corporate environment, you have Windows 7, Windows 10, for example. So you need to protect those and uh, and you know have your security operation system, security team to take action. So if there's a malware, if there's a virus or something. So there, uh, why Microsoft Defender gives the protection for your endpoint devices which we can see here it says endpoint identity email applications along those so if an email malicious email get delivered to your inbox and onto your computer so it will be able to help and protect uh, so here we have some uh, what it includes in the suite or in other words we can say it has a dependency um, you know, and uh, dependency based basically is providing you the protection against 365 or email. So basically, Defender for Office 365 and Cloud App Security, Identity, and Endpoint. So this is now available, and this is now have the integration uh, with Sentinel. So basically, uh, you can ingest the data. Uh, for Defender into Sentinel. So basically in one single dashboard, you have the full visibility about your environment. And that's the beauty, because that's why you wanna use the seam and source. So basically uh, Azure Sentinel give you that uh, uh, capability to have your uh, data collected from different sources. I've seen in my previous uh, videos where I was set up, setting up and configured Microsoft 365 and other data connectors to pull the data from. But Defender goes to an extra mile, which is uh, also protecting you, your desktop, your endpoints. And that's why uh, it includes or the component of that part of this Defender or as I said before, uh, Defender for Endpoint, Defender for Identity, Defender for 365, which is formerly known as Office 365 ATP, Advanced Threat Protection, and Microsoft Cloud App Security. So let's take a look while we continue. I have just uh, clicked on it and then we'll go through a number of uh, scenarios. So basically, uh, I just did a one click option to connect it and uh, here it's give me uh, a number of data which i need to set up and configure for endpoint connected right so uh, i do not have a fully configured environment but as you can see uh, it can collect and give you the visibility for example the device info the network info you know uh, whatever has to do with the endpoint we have device events for example sign in from authenticated events so all these events will be collected and then configured here same thing for office 365 uh, let's see if there is something available if not then we'll find out same thing for identity same thing for app security so i already configured microsoft 365 so as soon as available it should be 
popping up some data here for identity already I have set up in my Microsoft Azure tenant so we should be able to see that if not then maybe in in a week later or two weeks once it is available I should also be able to show you uh, because uh, that's the source of the data is coming from um, so there is no data I mean even if I select him I would not be able to collect because I do not have any device reporting to defender that's why I am not able to see for that I will have to configure those devices uh, if I want I can just connect it but since I do not have I'll wait for this to pop up and then make sure I connect it so we first understand and also if you need that we need a license M365 E5 or M365 A5 otherwise it may not work uh, another good thing to know is a bi-directional so if you're pulling the data to Sentinel uh, you can also see the incident status on your uh, defender bit. for example somebody works on an incident in Sentinel it's, so that can also be replicated in Microsoft Defender itself and uh, so this is how I did show you just how to connect to Defender here uh, it can take some time and what is there then I should also be able to see the data here this is what I'm saying so in the meantime uh, we can say uh, Microsoft Defender uh, basically will produce um, uh, alert uh, as same I have shown you in my previous videos and then you can assign those incidents uh, or alert to part of the people in your team or your SOC analyst you can use that and then uh, it will also allow you to avoid any duplicate alerts so it's a nice tool um, and then uh, as I said before you can provide a, a two-way or you know uh, protect your devices as well and you can do the hunting across so basically whenever attacks or anything happens you want to look at the lateral move or something along those lines so there are uh, different ways to troubleshoot but that's being said uh, this will allow you to have more visibility which has been missing for quite a while because you could see the data and traffic in Microsoft 365 and identities and but you did not or not able to see the data or visibility for the defender itself so once it gets populated I'll sure um, you know I'll add that for now I'm gonna pause it and we'll come back again now as you can see I am logging back to my Azure Sentinel and Azure Defender which I was trying to set up but it took uh, some time according to Microsoft uh, documentation it takes 10 minutes so um, again um, I see it's working it shows uh, connected and bi-directional is disabled if you want you can enable it so I do not have this I want to keep it uh, turned off and is an option where it says you can create incidents automatically so if there's something goes bad it will automatically create incident in your sentinel before I do that it says enable all however we can see some next steps recommendation also available here so if you scroll down you can find more create uh, uh, this is the re review so you can create incident base or your defender and you can also do some more extra alerting based on that if you i'm just going to run it and see does it bring anything or now if it's not then we may have to enable it so i'm going to go back and we go instruction if i enable it let's see what's going to happen here okay so this is important thing or your azure defender off azure defender on that's i wanted to see here because this is my also first time setting it up in my azure sentinel so it's a, a live production environment you see here so if i enable all it will enable for everything and it's gonna be charging me for that so it's going to be really very expensive for me if i turn this on 
but again based on your business need you can turn off turn on whichever it is so I'm going to turn off all of them I don't want to spend money on these uh, storage if you wanted to so I do have some storage to spin up if I want I can do it kubernetes is there container registries are there CICD related if you want to have some uh, investigation into that that's another area key vault if you wanted to have uh, resource manager DNS so for now I'm going to come and turn it off and also you know it depends on your requirements so DNS maybe you want to turn it on uh, that's if you leveraging your DNS services so you definitely want to have if you have programming and a CICD uh, develop an environment and you're using container and Kubernetes you may want to turn it on here as well and also for the storage so um, and that's uh, uh, you know uh, what you can find more what's going to do you know just in time VM access uh, and a threat protection for Azure VM and EDR so it's, it's yes, you know really cool to have this feature available and you can customize it based on your organization needs so again if you have this feature turn it on and uh, start exploring and um, let me know in the comments suggestion if it's helpful and i'll see you in my next video thanks for tuning in subscribe it and share it and with new topic in a new video